What if you could go to your mailbox and find $1,000 every single month? Chances are you would be doing a dance very similar to this. albeit maybe not with the awkward faces. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this is just a dream or it's a bad nightmare. Wake up! Either way, it is a dream that you can wake up from with a smile because passive income does exist and I'm gonna show you how. In fact, I'm gonna share with you 10 different ways that I'm able to make $1,000 a month passively. If you're ready to find out what these ideas are, let's go ahead and break it down right now. Billionaire investor Warren Buffett is credited with the quote, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. Dang, Warren, why you gotta be so doom and gloom? Like how? <sighs> Well, my outlook on passive income might not be as depressing as Mr. Warren Buffett. What I can share is that when I finally discovered what passive income is and I added it to my life, it has impacted myself, my family, my kids, my wife in so many positive ways. And I'm so grateful for it. That's why I wanna share some of these passive income ideas with you. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first passive income idea. The first passive income idea is real estate. Now with real estate, there are many different ways that you can slice and dice this to make passive income. For the first method, we're talking about real estate with physical property. So one option could be rental property. Maybe you're buying a house that you want to rent out. Or if you're like popular personal finance YouTuber, Graham Stephan, where you buy out a condo or townhouse and you live in one side and then you rent out the other that allows you to basically live rent free and maybe even be net positive. Another way that you can make money with with real estate is through Airbnb. Now with most people, they think of Airbnb as this is when you are traveling, you don't wanna stay in a hotel, it's just easier to book through Airbnb, but you can actually make money passively. Now a few different ways that you can do this. Let's say that you want to rent out a room in your own home, or if you have, let's say like an extended garage that you can convert into a place that people can sleep, you can actually rent out your own home, your own place and make money passively. Another way through Airbnb that requires a little more strategic financing is purchasing a place. So you could be buying a home, you could be buying your own townhouse or a condo, and then you are buying it for the strict purpose of renting it out on Airbnb. Living here in the Nashville, Tennessee area, I have seen so many people make good money using this strategy, purchasing a home, a condo, and then renting it out strictly for the purpose of Airbnb. Yes, the pandemic has had an effect on how much more they were making, but most of the ones I talked to, especially if you're living in a city that has decent tourist volume, then you can make money. If managing physical property isn't your thing, don't worry, there are other choices. You can actually invest into real estate and you don't have to manage any sort of property. Say what? So a few different ways that you can do this. The first way is that you can invest into real estate stocks. Now, most of these are going to be what are called real estate investment trusts. So these are companies that are investing into different types of real estate. This could be commercial real estate. It could be condominiums. It could be townhouses. I mean, there's so many different types. One example is Simon Property Group, stock symbol SPG. At the time of this recording, it's trading at around 60 bucks a share with a 7.6 dividend yield. They are primarily investing into malls, outlet malls, that type of property. And it is just one example of a real estate stock that you can purchase. If you're not comfortable with an individual stock, you can also purchase real estate ETFs. One example is the iShares US Real Estate ETF, stock symbol IYR. This ETF has averaged just north of 8% over its 10 year track record. On top of that, it's currently paying a 2.6 dividend yield. Those are just a few examples of real estate stocks and ETFs that you can purchase. Trust me, there are dozens, if not hundreds of options. If you don't want to invest into publicly traded REITs, and another option is to go private. You can invest into private REITs. Now with private REITs, it truly is about who do you know. When I first began my investing journey, I really didn't even know that these private REITs existed. But as my career grew, as I started making more connections, then I started getting 
approached by real estate investors that had these private REITs. And essentially how it works is that you are placing money into these private REITs managed by these real estate investors and they're going out and using your money, buying properties, whether that's commercial properties, could be private properties, residential, and then they are either flipping them or they're going out and finding rental properties. Now the first private REIT that I ever invest into, I actually have a partial ownership in a residential property. So with this, I put $25,000 in and I'm getting a 7% dividend yield. This is a check deposited into my 401k account every single month. Now more recently, I did a much larger investment, at least larger for me, with a private REIT. I put $50,000 in. Now with this REIT, I am a part owner in this 146 apartment unit complex. Uh, this is actually based out of Columbia, South Carolina. I was approached by, you get another real estate investor just to see if I was interested. Now with both of these, I ran them by my CPA to make sure that there was something that I wasn't missing. I got the green light and it was a way just to diversify my portfolio and make passive income. With the second property that has a 7% preferred return and we are expecting a 18% average annual return over that seven year period. So maybe the private REIT thing isn't your cup of tea. <laughs> And instead of going out there and trying to find somebody that has some private REIT that you can put your money into, you wanna do it from the convenience of your own home. Well, guess what? There is also another way that you can invest money in a private REIT, except you're going to do it all online. With technology, now you can invest into online real estate crowdfunding platforms. There are several different options. One of the most popular is Fundrise. Now, the big difference here with a Fundrise, a crowdfunding online REIT, as opposed to the private REIT is the minimum amount to invest. With the private REITs, typically you're going to need 10, 25, $50,000 or more to get started. With Fundrise, you can get started with as little as 500 to $1,000. It's really no different than opening an online investment account, investing into stocks and bonds, but the difference here is that you are investing into real life real estate properties. Once you open your account with Fundrise, you can see the actual properties that you're investing into, and they'll give you updates on new properties acquired or if there's any updates in the properties that you already own. I've had my Fundrise account now for just a few years and right now I'm averaging 7.4% return. Now I opened my account, put my money in and have not touched it so it is one of the easiest forms of passive income that I make. All right, the next way has been one of my most favorite ways of making passive income because it prevents that awkward conversation of having to ask a family member to borrow some money. Will you loan daddy some money? Heck no. What? Are you sure? This is money. All right, for real, if you're not gonna smash that like button after my daughter making a cameo appearance in my video, well, I mean, come on, I don't think we can be friends. All right, seriously though, peer-to-peer -peer lending was a disruptor in the financial service industry, and I've been a big fan of it since the beginning. Lending Club, Prosper, those were the two peer-to-peer -peer lending giants. And with Lending Club, I was making well over 10, 12% return in the beginning, but then things just started to, started to fade away. In my largest lending club account, I'm averaging just under 6% return. Still passive, so can't be too angry. But what I can be angry about is that Lending Club just announced that they are closing up shop on their notes platform. Say it ain't so. That's right, Lending Club is not going out of business. They are just pivoting into something different. I don't really quite know what that is. Now, there is still Prosper and other peer-to-peer -peer lenders that are still in the game, but this is a sad day for peer-to-peer -peer lending because I don't know if it is still the disruptor that we once saw. Either way, if you're looking for for a passive income stream, you can check out Prosper. They are still around. You have to find out if they qualify in your state. John Rockefeller, one of the wealthiest Americans in US history, had this to say about passive income idea number four. Do you know the only thing that gives me pleasure? It's seeing my dividends coming in. Really, John, like that's the only thing that gives you pleasure? Like you were one of the wealthiest dudes in all the world. I mean, there's some other things that should be giving you some pleasure, if you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, I do agree with John in the sense that I do get pleasure in seeing my dividends 
coming in, but like, it's not the only thing that gives me pleasure, but it is an exciting feeling buying a stock and then seeing those dividend checks coming in. Now there's a few different ways that you can get dividend from stocks. You can go out and purchase individual stocks or you can purchase ETFs. If you are going to purchase individual stocks, obviously there is more risk involved. So you wanna make sure that you're doing your homework, making sure what you're putting your money into. If you check out some of my other videos where I'm doing the grow your dough throwdown, where I'm investing in all these different platforms, in my Robinhood account, I am building a dividend portfolio. A few of the stocks that I own in that portfolio, one of which is Principal Financial Group. Right now that's paying about a 4.72% dividend. That is a salty dividend. I enjoy that dividend, getting that dividend check. Another stock that I own in that portfolio is Ameriprise, and that one currently is paying about a 2.2% dividend. Not as much as 4%, but the beauty of dividends is that it is a check that is automatic that is coming in every quarter. If you think you wanna go the individual stock route, then one resource that you can look up is called Dividend Aristocrat. So basically what this is, is a list of stocks that are part of the S&P 500. So the top 500 US companies. And any stock that is on this list, the Dividend Aristocrat list, they have a track record of paying their dividends every single year and also increasing them for the past 25 years. This isn't the main list that I'm using to purchase my dividend stocks, but it definitely has a heavy influence on the ones I've added to my Robinhood portfolio. If you're not comfortable purchasing individual stocks, another option that you can do is buying ETFs. Now there are tons of different ETFs that specialize in dividends, but there's one I just wanna to highlight today. One ETF that you can purchase is the Vanguard High Yield Dividend ETF. The symbol on this is VYM. So basically with this, you're not just buying one individual stock, you are buying a portfolio of individual stocks all to have a track record of paying a really high dividend. The overall yield on this ETF is about 3.7% at the time of this recording. Now, if you're not sure where to buy any of these stocks or ETFs, you do have a few options. If you are confident and comfortable in purchasing individual stocks on your own, I would take a look at Robinhood and Webull. Both of these right now are offering some promos where if you open an account, deposit some money, you get some free stock. I like me some free stock. And if you're opening an account, investing in yourself and you get free stock, well, what can we say? That is money in the bank. If you're not comfortable choosing ETFs or stocks on your own, you do have some other options too. This is basically like you open an account and somebody is gonna do the work for you. One of my favorite online platforms that does all the heavy lifting for you is Betterment. All you have to do with Betterment is open the account, choose your financial goal, Goals, add some money, and then they will build a custom ETF portfolio for you. If ETFs aren't your thing and you want more individual stocks, then you can look at M1 Finance. M1 Finance has a few different options. You can open an account, build your own pie. So basically you're buying individual stocks and diversifying them into however slice and dice it that you want. Now, once again, that might be too much for you to handle. So they also have the option where you can purchase pies that have already been built for you. So if you think Think of this like going to your favorite pizza joint. Do you want to build your own pie where you're choosing all the toppings or do you want the pizza joint to choose all the toppings for you? How come I keep making these food analogies when I'm recording this right before dinner? Because right now I am starving and I'm craving some pizza. Give me a pie. Now the beautiful thing about the online platforms that I just mentioned, Robinhood, Webull, M1 Finance, and Betterment is that there is no minimum to get started. Now if you want to get those free stock, there is a minimum investment. Typically it's like $100. Open account, put $100 dollars and get some free stock, but they don't have like a thousand or $10,000 minimum investment to get going. So yes, you want some passive income, get these dividends. You can get started with no minimum investment. All right, the fifth way that you can make passive income. And I guess out of all of these it is the most boring. Oh, oh gosh. So boring. Now, the reason that bonds are super boring is because they're also super safe. But on top of that, right now, interest rates just aren't very good. They're actually really, really bad. Right now, the 10 year treasury is at like something like 0. 0.00 nothing. Uh, so that's not really an option. Now you can go out and buy individual bonds, but even those are not as fun. And typically you're locking up your money for 10, 20, maybe even 30 years. So what most people are doing when they're buying bonds is per purchasing ETFs or mutual funds. Right now we're gonna talk about specifically ETFs. Now it is boring, it's not that exciting, but one ETF that you can buy is the symbol BND. You get that BND, it almost spells bond. James Bond. Very clever. 
Right now, this ETF is paying a whopping 1.15%. As I said, it is boring. Now, if you want a higher yield, you can purchase a high yield ETF. One example is simple HYG, which is a high yield bond ETF. Now, this thing is paying almost five times as much, paying just over 5.27% at the time of this recording. So with this, you are investing into high yield bonds, which basically means high risk. So these bonds could default. So you're going to see some fluctuation in the share price of this ETF. But if you're looking for that passive income, that 5% yield, this is an option. So number six right now is an oxymoron. Uh, I, I said bonds was boring, but this is another one that is, I guess, even more boring and, and quite disgusting, but high yield online savings. Now, if you do have cash, which you should, you wanna make sure that you are maximizing and making as much as possible. But right now, there really isn't, <laughs> isn't a such thing as a high yield online savings. I just pulled up my online high yield savings account with my national bank. And right now, for the month of November, I got paid $22.43. $22.43 on a savings account that has just over 513 thousand dollars <laughs> that's ow that hurts twenty two dollars it used to be typical where you could get at least one to two percent in a online high yield savings marcus from goldman sachs which i talk about a lot on this channel just because they have been known as one of the highest paying online savings account that exists and right now they're well below the one percent mark i think they're around 0.4 or 0.6 percent and i don't expect them to go up anytime soon even Robinhood, which i love as an online investment platform they kept advertising this cash management program that they were going to launch. And I've been on the waiting list for, I don't know how long, finally got in and it is paying a, who a jaw dropping 0.3%. That's bananas. But once again, while most of these online savings accounts, I mean, the rates are almost laughable. You still, it is easy money. You don't want to be making nothing on your cash. You want to be making something. So try to maximize as much as you can. But that brings us to number seven. Okay, so we talked about bonds being boring. We talk about online high yield savings being boring. One thing that isn't boring though is number seven. And number seven is cryptocurrency savings account. Now I just did a video where I talked about BlockFi, which is it's just one of several options out there right now with cryptocurrency savings accounts. Now, why isn't this boring? Well, it isn't boring because of one number and that number is 8.6%. So previously I talked about my savings account right now with my, my big bank paid me like 23, $24 interest on over a half a million dollars, like still having a pan attack over that. So check this out. I have my BlockFi account. Now, initially I only put $10,000 in this thing. I just added 15, so I've got 25,000 total. As of right now, I've only received one interest payment, but that first interest payment was $69.88. $69.88 .88 on a $10,000 deposit. And yet on my online, my bank savings account that has a half a million paid me $24. Do you, do you see the discrepancy there? Now, obviously a cryptocurrency savings account is gonna have a lot more risk than your traditional bank. Either way though, I mean, this this right now might be the most exciting passive income that I'm making right now because I, I mean, come on, 8.6%. Now, if you wanna learn more about BlockFi or cryptocurrency savings accounts, check out that video. I also have a link in the description to a blog post that I wrote about all the different options. All right, moving on to number eight. So right now I'm actually at the factory in downtown Franklin and one of my favorite restaurants is is Mojo's Tacos, which is right here. Now, I love tacos, and anytime I find a restaurant that I love, I can't help but tell everybody about it. So anytime anybody comes to the Nashville area, I am telling them about Mojo's Tacos. But so what does it have to do with passive income and number eight? Well, number eight is talking about affiliate marketing. And so many people have so many issues with affiliate marketing, they don't understand how it works, how to do it effectively. And really all you're doing is thinking about, you love a taco joint, like a Mojo's Tacos. So if this is something that you absolutely love, then you're going to tell everybody about it. But just imagine that anytime somebody goes to Mojo's Tacos because you told them to go, you get paid. And that's what affiliate marketing is all about. You're just sharing services. You're sharing products that you love and you're getting paid a small commission to do it. Now, unfortunately, Mojo's Tacos does not have affiliate programs. So I don't get paid for every single person that goes there because otherwise I would be a multi-millionaire. No, but what I do get paid on is affiliates on my website, Good Financial Sense, or here on the YouTube channel. So with the 
personal finance blog where I talk about money and investing and financial planning. We have affiliate partners in banking, so online high yield savings, you know, the high yield savings accounts. We talk about investing, so we've got Roth IRAs, online brokerages, we also have life insurance, we have auto insurance, we have mortgage refinance. So there are tons of different affiliate partners that we have on the site, and also I can incorporate those in my YouTube channel. Now the biggest pushback that I hear from a lot of people that don't want to get into affiliate marketing, especially when they look at my my blog, they look at my YouTube channel, like, oh, Jeff, you're a former financial planner, so you are a financial expert. So yes, people are going to listen to you. But here's the thing about being an expert. The truth is that anybody isn't an expert that is one step ahead of the next person. So just like Mojo's Tacos, am I an expert in Mojo's Tacos? I mean, maybe, but here's the thing. I've eaten here before, and for somebody that hasn't eaten here before, I am now the expert, and they are going to trust my advice. They are going to trust my opinion because of all the other content that I pushed on the web with my blog posts and my YouTube videos. So here's the thing. To be an expert, you just have to be one step ahead of the next person, and they have to trust you, and that's all it takes to do affiliate marketing and to do it well and to make good money. Okay, so Number nine, I'm a little hesitant to list this as a passive income source, but there definitely are elements that are passive and other elements where it's not passive at all. And number nine is YouTube. Now, obviously with YouTube right now, I am recording a video. There is nothing passive about this, but there are income streams with YouTube where once you record a video, once you hit publish, you can still make money on videos that you published months ago, years ago. And if you have affiliate links in your descriptions, you can also get paid as well. Just to give you a few examples, examples of this. There was this video that I published on skipping your bank, looking at banking alternatives. This video was published over two years ago. And last month I got paid $636 for a video that was published, like I said, over two years ago. Another video that I did on how to invest $500. Once again, that video is about two years old too. And it paid me just under $300 for the last month. So that's almost $1,000 that I made last month on two videos that I haven't promoted, two videos I even haven't even thought about in two years time. But guess what? Only reason I'm thinking about them right now because I'm still getting paid. And that is one of the beauties with YouTube and passive income. Now, one of the things I love about passive income is when you build something, you build it once and you get paid on that thing over and over and over again. And number 10 embodies that more than I can think anything else. And that is digital products. Now with digital products, this could be so many different things. This could be a email challenge. This could be a PDF. It could be an ebook. It could be a course. I mean, there's so many different variations of this, you gotta find what works best for you. Now, the thing that I had to get over and something that you might have to get over as well is that many people think with a digital product that has to be this course that's like, 50 videos and 17 lessons. And that's the only way that you can make money with a digital product. And I learned from other people that that's not the case. And I discovered that firsthand with my Make 1K challenge. And this is a free email challenge that I mentioned here on the YouTube channel. I mentioned this on my blog. And with this is a free email challenge. So you can go to make1kchallenge.com, sign up. Essentially what we show you to do is how to get your blog set up and how to make your first $1,000. But once you sign up, then you get offered an upsell to a $7 product, which just has more checklists, more PDFs, and some behind the scenes lessons on what it takes to make $1,000 blogging. And this was something that I created years ago. This is longer than the two years ago on the YouTube video I just mentioned. I think, I think this thing was originally created three or four years ago. Now I will say it was recently updated. So I found a graphic designer to make it look a little more modern than what it was. And that's it. There hasn't been anything else done with this. Uh, we mentioned this on the YouTube video, as I said, we mentioned this on the blog, and this is something that still makes thousands of dollars a month, and it's not even heavily promoted. So that is a lower tier digital product that we have at $7, a higher tier product. I have two courses right now. My first course is the Online Advisor Growth Formula. This was a course that I created strictly for financial advisors looking to grow their business utilizing online marketing. Now this course currently sells for $2,500, and this was something, once again, I created years ago, and there haven't been a lot of updates because there hasn't been any updates needed. A newer course that I just launched, well, not just launched, but recently launched is Passive 1K or the Passive 1K Income Accelerator. And basically with this course, I show people that are interested in building an online business, how to build it, how to outsource it, how to delegate to where you can start making $1,000 a month passively. So this course currently sells for $9.97. It's something if you're interested in, once again, I'll have a link in the description. But basically, as I said, all the work has been done and any sales that come in are purely passive. 
Okay, so that is just 10 of my most favorite ways that I make passive income, but obviously there's more than 10 ways. You can actually go to my blog, Good Financial Sense, where I have a list right now of 28 different ways that you can make passive income. But the key on any of these ways is one, you gotta start. So which one are you going to pick? Which one are you gonna start implementing so you can start making passive income? Or two, if you've already started making passive income, which is the next one are you going to add? Because right now we've got plenty that you can add to the plate, start adding multiple income streams, and start building that well. Archie, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, this is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and all you can make it awesome. Until next time, peace.